I'd like to point something out to you. Notice how the subconscious mind here, like the iceberg, is immersed in the ocean, in the water. Now, what do you think that represents? That represents something as well. Our subconscious minds, in a way, I believe, are immersed and are connected up with what you might call universal intelligence, okay? Universal intelligence, how does that work? Well, there's all kinds of information all around us. You see, we're like fish swimming in a sea of information. There's information coming out of every person's body that is radiating out, filling the immensity of space immediately. I got news for you, okay? You probably thought that those thoughts that you're thinking, you know, or that you thought in your head, that those stay in your head and that those are just your thoughts and they're private. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to burst your bubble, but those thoughts, I believe, immediately radiate out, fill the immensity of space, okay? I think that's how God knows what we're thinking, okay? I think that's how that works. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long, and I am happy to say, sitting next to me, is my lovely wife, Robin. Hi, everyone. So it's been a few weeks since Robin has been on the show, and I am so glad to have her back. It's so good to be back, and we have a very good topic for you today. Yes, we do. So we're going to be talking about a practice within the inner healing movement that has made its way in some churches. And um, it's a very dangerous practice. It's a practice called Splunkna. Splunkna. Uh, <laughs> not as popular as Sozo. Right. Um, and if you're not familiar with the inner healing movement, I know we've done a number of videos. We did one on the beginnings of the inner healing movement mm -hmm. with Agnes, Agnes Sanford. Sanford, and we've done one on Sozo. Mm -hmm. So this is the next in line. So if you're familiar with it, we just wanted to give a little more background on what is Splunkna? Where yeah. did it come from? Yep. So Splunk, <laughs> Splunk not was uh, developed by a woman by the name of Sarah Thiessen. And we have a clip of Sarah Thiessen explaining Splunkna. I'm Sarah Thiessen. I'm the founder of the Splunkna Training Institute. Splunkna is a mind-body protocol for inner healing. The example I normally use is, let's say you fell off the bunk bed when you were five years old and broke your arm. If you ended up in the counseling office 30 years later, you might say, I have a fear of heights and I know where it comes from. But talking about that fear of heights doesn't actually do a whole lot to change it. But what Splunkna is able to do is say, all right, where in your body are you holding the frequencies of that original memory? We can one by one go to each emotion and hold, simply holding the place on the body, the acupuncture point, where the emotion is being stored, and then remembering or tuning in, setting one's intention at that memory. That combination of touch and thought is a natural prompt to the body, and it releases the emotional frequency like letting go of a helium balloon. So once a particular emotional frequency has released out of the body, it's permanently missing. In order to get it back, you would have to go back and be five years old again and have that trauma, which thankfully you can't do. We can finally say, from my spirit, on behalf of my soul, my body, all my being, I break agreement in the name of Jesus with whatever the significant lie might be, a destructive vow maybe. And now that all the emotional glue from the original trauma is out of the way, now I can pray a prayer like that and nothing in my being fights with me. Now all the rest of my, all the parts of me, all surrender to the spirit man's decision to choose life. And because of that, change happens and freedom happens at remarkable levels. So there are a lot of new age elements that Sarah Thiessen has brought into Splunkna, and that makes it very dangerous. And Robin, it also seems kind of like a quick fix therapy to me, doesn't it? It does. Uh, so Sarah wrote a book called Splunkna, The Redemption of Energy Healing for the Kingdom of God. And in this book, she goes to great lengths to talk about new age healing techniques and how new age is very much anti-Christian. Mm -hmm. And then she goes on to say that what she is doing is not new age at 
all because uh, one of her big sayings, Danny, is that if it's in creation, it's got to be good because God created it. And so Robin and I were talking about this and God did say it was good before the curse. <laughs> but now that sin has come into the world and you got uh, all of this evil, just because uh, something is in the world does not make it redeemed, does not make it a good thing. Right. Uh, there are plenty of evil things that uh, we cannot say that uh, God, that a Christian can use because Christ has redeemed the world. Right. So we find a new age practice that the practice might be good, but mm -hmm. we don't like the new age philosophies attached to it. So we redeem that practice and yes. Christianize it. Right. Right. Okay. Um, anyway, go ahead. In her book, mm -hmm. um, she also talks about the struggle that she had not knowing whether something was glorifying to God or not. And she states, this is one of her prayers to God that she uses, you are trustworthy to answer my prayers and guide my life. So when I have a de decision to make, I'm going to surrender it to you completely. As well as I know how, I will give it up to you and open my heart to whatever you decide. And then I'm going to ask you to direct my heart, to align my heart with yours on the subject. From then on, I'm going to assume that the direction my heart leans is from you and move on it. I'm going to trust that if I'm wrong, you will redirect me. Simple but practical. It's the only way I could come up with to move the idea of following God's lead into reality without a divine fortune cookie showing up every time there was a decision to make. So let me ask you, what did you find wrong in that quote? I'm going to tell you one of the most concerning sentences that Robin and I found is from then, this is what she says, from then on, I'm going to assume that the direction my heart leans is from you and move on. it. I'm going to assume. So the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked, desperately sick, other translations say. And who can understand it? In other words, we can't even understand our own heart. We are not to trust in our heart or, uh, you know, what we think might be God. We have to open up God's Word and say, okay, what does God's Word say on a particular right. incident? Or what, how, what are the principles I can glean from God's Word, but not, let me just follow my heart. Exactly. I think um, as a Christian for a good number of years, I don't trust my heart. Mm -mm. I, and I know I pray and I'm in the word and I know that I can so easily lead myself astray, mm -hmm. allow myself to be led astray. Yeah. Uh, Robin, I, I do want to make one quick caveat here. We do not, we are not, you know, downplaying biblical counseling when we talk about sozo Correct. Or when we talk about Splunkna, as long as it is biblical counseling, um, that, that that's I'm, there are issues. Life is difficult. There are issues in life where we need to go see counselors sometimes. So that's not what we're doing here. We're not saying, oh, you should never go see a counselor. But we're talking about the dangerous New Age practices and these counselors like Sarah Thiessen and um, oh uh, Donna De Silva. And um, right. Teresa Leibscher, who are not, um, you know, they, they are not biblical counselors. They, 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 they've taken certification classes, a lot of, a lot of these Splotna practitioners and Sozo practitioners. Right. So we're going to start delving into what exactly is Splotna mm -hmm. and, and what other um, ideas and methods does it borrow from. And we have this quote. It says, Splunkna is the first Christian-based energy psychology. Its developers have spent the last 18 years developing this protocol from a fiercely biblical perspective. Energy psychology is a group of treatment protocols that use the same bodily system that chiropractic and acupuncture is based on to heal emotions that are stored in the body from psychological trauma. Spelunkna has been developed on the foundation that there is no other way to the Father but through Jesus, his Son, and from the belief that all things belong to our Lord. And finally, Nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. 
It's very ironic that Sarah Thiessen uses, or that the Splunk knob definition uses uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, 3 through 5. Let me just read that. It's, I'm going to read it in context here, starting in verse 1. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared, who forbid marriage, require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving to those who believe and know the truth for everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is to be if it is received with thanksgiving for it is made holy by the word of God and prayer so we're not to say God, Paul is not saying that everything in the world it's okay now we can use whatever we want because everything's made holy by prayer this entire thing this entire passage is, is speaking of false teachers who forbid marriage, forbid certain kinds of foods, and other things like that. So Sarathesin is taking, and, and, and those who practice Splankna are taking that passage out of its context. Right. And the word Splankna itself, um, they say it's in the Bible, and it refers to the bowels or the inner person. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of verses that actually use that word, uh, Philippians 2, 1 and 2. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Okay, so Danny, where can I find the word splankna in those verses? So the Greek word splankna is translated affection in uh, Philippians 2 there. So that that's that word. And, and it does have to do with you know, the, the, the inner man or the heart, actually, so. Okay. And then Colossians 3, 12 and 13, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And so... Uh, heart there is, or hearts there is, is splank, splankna, um, uh, compassionate hearts or, or whatever, and that's what they use. So, Danny, we have a special guest today, don't we? We do. Uh, I reached out to Doreen Virtue, and she agreed to come on and talk with me about um, energy healing. And so Thursday, Doreen and I had a conversation um, that lasts about 15 minutes or so, and we split that conversation up into three parts, and we'll intersperse that conversation throughout the video. So here is the first part of that. All right. So I have invited Doreen Virtue on today to take part in this episode because we're going to be talking about energy healing. And before Christ saved and delivered Doreen from the New Age movement, Doreen spent well, a good part of her life in the New Age movement, and she herself has um, has experience with energy healing. So, Doreen, thank you so much for joining me today and taking time out of your busy schedule to come on and take part of this uh, episode. Thank you for having me on, Daniel, and, and thank you for your research, Robin. This is a topic that uh, it brings me to righteous anger because it it does remind me of what I was trying to do for most of my life, basically half a century, where I thought I was a Christian, and then I was using these New Age mysticism mm -hmm. methods and trying to blend them, and then I would use twisted Bible verses to justify them and and kind of assuage the fears of my audience, which I repent and apologize for. And so when I look at Splanka or the similar. Uh, method called Sozo that Bethel Redding mm -hmm. is connected to. Um, it 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 really is offensive on so many levels, and so let me just back up and say that I was okay. a Reiki master. I was I was a Reiki master in the New Age. Just to back up, I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from Chapman University and a master's in counseling psychology from Chapman University, and then a master's in biblical and theological counts. Uh, and a master's in biblical and theological studies from Western Seminary. So my background is, in a, in a way, academically biblical counseling. And when I look at Splanka and the fact that they are trying to do layperson counseling by mm -hmm. digging into people's memories, uh, mm -hmm. this is so dangerous. When I was a psychotherapist, I was 
the the director of an all woman psychiatric inpatient hospital unit in Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, Cum- at Cumberland Hill Hospital. And we were dealing with a lot of abuse survivors and PTSD. I took lots of classes on mm. dealing with trauma. You have to be so careful to go into someone's memory bank. And there are such a thing as false memories. Um, you can you can make the situation much worse. You can even lead to a psychotic break if you don't know what you're doing. And the Splanka so-called therapy, uh, it's it's a certification course that's taking lay people and pretending that you can blend Chinese medicine, which is clearly pagan in, in New Age, uh, would, about the meridian systems, and then claim that, well, God made energy, God made mm-hmm. these meridian systems, Boy, I, I know that I know that lie because I was uh, fed it and I actually regurgitated it to my audiences. I regret. Wow. Um, I was a Reiki master, and I was a medium, a diviner. Uh, I used pranic healing and something called um, uh, polar therapy, energy healing. And what I found is that um, every year there seemed to be some new and improved energy healing system that would pop up. And I just want to be blunt. They're they're cash cows. They're money making yeah. ventures for people. I'm glad I didn't invent my own. You know, I, people suggested very often that I should make you know angel energy healing or something. But mm. even before I was saved, it it seemed too hokey to yeah. get involved with that. But yet I was taking the classes, and then I would um, encourage others to get involved with energy healing. And this is just not biblical to say that God created meridian systems. God would not contradict himself. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So why would he drink of the cup of the demons and the cup of the Lord as as we're commanded not to do? Mm -hmm. Um, It makes no sense. And, And yet, see, these kind of systems prey on people who don't know their Bible, um, perhaps are saved Christians, perhaps not. Perhaps they did a prayer at an altar once. And like I thought I was a Christian most of my life because I was raised with a Bible and going to church, but it was the false Christian science gospel. So I wasn't saved. I wasn't a Christian. And so it, it could prey on folks like that who think, well, I'm a Christian. I identify as a Christian. But th- th- most people get into new age because of a desire for healing. Mm-hmm. And that's what Splanka holds out a carrot on a stick and says, I can heal you and I can make it painless and it'll be biblical and God wants you to do this. And mm-hmm. so they, 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 the Splanka, just like the new age energy healing systems I came out of, all say the same thing, that you've got a blockage. The new age, in fact, is obsessed with getting rid of your blocks. And we had all sorts of methods in the new age that seemed Christian, like calling on Archangel Michael to clear your blocks. We would do prayers to God and the Holy Spirit and and Jesus, but it wasn't the real Jesus. So we seemed like the Splanka system that we were um, coming from a biblical perspective, and and yet we weren't, and neither is Splanka. And it's something that's spiritually dangerous because you cannot you can't have God's blessings or protection to do something that is dealing with paganism. She made a really good point there, I think, about uh, these uh, practitioners within the inner healing movement and Splankna and in Sozo that aren't professionals and that can really damage somebody's mind by trying to get into their mind. You can go on a Splunkno website or on the Sozo website and get mm-hmm. certification yourself by going through a, a brief training course. Yeah. Um, one of the things I appreciated about what Doreen said is, um, so Splunkna in particular claims that it is based on a number of new age practices, but they take the best of that new age practice yes. and leave the worst of that new age practice. And therefore we can call it Christian. And because they pray during a session and yeah. ask Jesus to lead them, they can go through this acupuncture or using the meridian system mm-hmm. or or any one of a number of different um, modalities that we're going to talk about right now. And these are the things that Splunkness says it uses in its therapies. So yeah. the 
The first one is EMDR, which is Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. We're going to show a brief clip, but right before we do, it's if you picture the REM movement that your eyes do when you're sleeping mm -hmm. and they're bouncing all over the place. So a therapist uses those kinds of eye movements to kind of jolt you emotionally out of whatever trauma you may be kind of stuck in, any PTSD. So let's watch that clip. Yeah. Um, EMDR therapy is eye movement desensitization and process, reprocessing. And it's uh, bilateral brain functioning. So you have a buzzer in either hand or in either ear, or you're moving your eyes back and forth. And it, it's, it's uh, activating both sides of the brain while you're talking about a trauma or a disturbance. And so much like emotional freedom technique, it unlocks that, that energetic disturbance. Wow. And so you can have like, you know, full, full trauma leave your body and you could walk out of one EMDR session feeling pretty new. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I yeah, I recommend that. it to everybody. Okay, cool. Okay. I recommend it to everybody. Um, do you want to move right on to the next one? That's I one do. of the therapies. The second therapy is the Reiki. 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 Yep. And Reiki. And uh, Doreen Virtue was actually a Reiki. Um, she was a certified Reiki technician. So just in a nutshell, for someone who might have never heard of what energy healing actually is. Can you just describe what it is and how that all, you know, how, how somebody who would be practicing inner healing, uh, not inner, energy healing, I'm sorry, energy healing, um, how someone would go about, like you said, you, you practice Reiki. How does that all work? Yeah, so logistically, um, it's based on the practitioner being the intermediary and taking the energy in the new age, they call it the universal energy in Reiki. It's called, you know, the Reiki energy. And it, you're a conduit coming through you. And most of the systems involve having it, uh, imagining it coming through the top of your head into your body and out through your fingers, out through your hand. In Reiki, there's these creepy symbols. In fact, here, here they are. I'll send them to you so you can show people. Uh, and this is something that a man named Mikau Isui in the 1920s, he, he was a big, uh, he was a Buddhist who was very much into Buddhist medicine is what it was called. And so he had visions of these symbols. And then we had the inner healing movement. Uh, you mentioned inner healing. That was actually the basis yeah. of the energy healing movement. And, and that was around the time of Charles Fillmore. This would have been Phineas Quimby's era. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and Charles Fillmore was the founder of the Unity Church, which is what, this is the kind of Christianity we see with these kind of movements. Mm -hmm. it, and my mom would take me to Unity Sunday School quite often. So I came out of that. It's, it's progressive Christianity on steroids. And wow. it's, yeah, so it'll twist Bible verses and then it will be just a self-help movement. So all these things, Sozo, Splanka, uh, energy healing, where you, you, the practitioner, are the conduit. Look at how me-centered that is. Look at how man-centered and yes. workspace that is. Yeah. That's not what the Bible tells us at all. I mean, the, God, God will send us to physicians. I, mm -hmm. you know, we know that. Uh, God will use means to help us. But he certainly wouldn't in invoke uh, Chinese meridian systems in doing so. Right. Yeah. So it is almost every religious system out there outside of Christianity is works based. Or not almost every religion out there is a works based religion. So that's a good point. But think about that. You are a conduit. Uh, you're, and, and, and one of the things, if you go onto the Splankna uh, Training Institute website, and they talk about muscle testing, which we'll be talking about shortly. Um, they have this idea that the practitioner is sitting and then the, 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 uh, the, the, the person receiving the treatment is sitting, if you can call it treatment, uh, is sitting. And so there's this, this, um, this, this energy or this frequency that leaves the practitioner and goes to the the one that's receiving the splankna. So it's just, it, it, you can really see the new age. When the practitioner asks a question, the meaning of that question has a particular frequency. Check out the other video for emotions having frequencies. That frequency passes from practitioner to client and hits the client's system as a match or mismatch. And back to Reiki for a minute, this man who um, created Reiki, Mikhail 
Yusui. He took the word, the Japanese word rei means universal and ki means vital life force or energy and put those together because one of their huge beliefs is that there is that one force, mm -hmm. one energy that really connects us all. And we'll talk about that deep subconscious yeah. that flows through us all. And so the Christian practitioner will take that and say, well, that life force is God. Mm. So again, it's, it's, it's just try, it's just putting Christian names on uh, satanic practices. Right. What that's, what that's doing. And one Reiki master, Victoria Bodner, says the following. She says, because it works on the entire self, mind, body, and emotions, and because it is universal life force energy, Reiki may be successful in all types of physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual healing. So in addition to Reiki, Spelunkna uses the uh, healing techniques of EFT and TFT. Yes. TFT being thought field, field therapy. therapy, which has to do with tapping in different areas of the body, probably using those meridians mm -hmm. that we talk about yep. in order to release traumas. And EFT, which means emotional, emotional freedom, freedom therapy. technique. Or technique, yeah also uses tapping. So they're very closely related, but we're going to show you a couple of clips so you can differentiate between the two. And we have a good definition of TFT. TF, this is TFT. There are some psychosensory techniques. TFT, that's thought field therapy, not to be confused with EFT, was developed by my late friend, Dr. Roger Callahan, which involves tapping on various acupuncture meridian points which stimulates in the body and mind the change of flow in energy, which may be blocked, causing a physical and psychological problem to disappear. This is what Sarah Thiessen uses. And this, this kind of new age, these kinds of new age practices are in Splankna. Now, I have a clip here with the next clip we're, we're about to play is from an actual astrologer. She does horoscopes and all that stuff. And she's going to talk about how she uses EFT. I left this to the end because not everybody's going to be interested in this, and I didn't want it to interfere with me giving you the horoscope information. This is something that I have been doing for longer than I've been doing astrology. I've been doing astrology for around 13 years, and I've been doing EFT, the emotional freedom technique, for even longer than I've been doing astrology. And so I have been doing a lot of blending the two. I use a lot of EFT and TFT thought field therapy, which is the mother of EFT emotional freedom technique. In my practice, um, if we're doing uh, an astrological reading and someone is getting uh, upset about something that's um, in their happening in their life, we can instantaneously work on the stress and the energy and the patterns by using EFT. So I want you to learn how to do it and be able to do it for yourself or you can contact me and have a session and we can do astrology and EFT or one or the other or however it flows. So it's based on the Chinese medicine system where there's meridians, lines of energy that run through the body. If you ever see Alex Gray's uh, artwork, if you haven't, it's really beautiful. You can look it up, but he has always, not always, but very often the um, artistic rendition of these rivers of light that run through the body and there are points of concentration along the rivers of light, like little hubs on these roads through the body energetically. And when you get acupuncture, this is, this is what you're using. You're using these lines of energy and energy gets blocked along these lines. And then other parts of your body have to overcompensate. And so when trying to work with a deeply rooted issue or just a topic that's of a concern right now, using the emotional freedom technique is a tapping process where we tap on placements where these meridians are pronounced and we can clear through energy. And so you can see, Robin, that these people who are, you know, astrologers, people within the New Age movement, that this is stuff they use all the time. Using all the techniques and then mm -hmm. moving over to seeing a Christian Splunkna life coach. We're going to see her teach us how we can use tapping. Our first finger represents me. The second finger, the middle finger, I'm not giving any of you the finger. The second finger represents God. Okay? God is the tallest of our fingers and he can handle all these things. Some people will ask me, well, 
is it really biblical to have to forgive God? God is perfect. And I would say absolutely uh, God is perfect. I believe that. But we are not. <laughs> and unforgiveness creates a space in the relationship that is not good in that relationship with God. And so when I'm forgiving God, I'm making statements that might be holding me, that I might be angry at God for, um, but I'm choosing to forgive God. Again, he doesn't make mistakes, he's perfect, but I'm just, I'm still releasing the emotion that I feel and that I've held up that has kept me um, separate or far away from moving closer to God. Think about the things that you're angry about God, at God for. So it might be, I forgive God for not giving me what I, what I want. I forgive God. And it, the more specific you can be with these statements, the better. Something like, I forgive God for taking my mom. I forgive God for taking my mom. I forgive God for taking my mom. I'm tapping it in. And once again, I may be blaming God. I don't think really in my theologically accurate mind, I don't necessarily think God took my mom. But in that moment, that might feel true. And so I would say it. So most interesting line of her video so far would be this lady talking about her theologically accurate mind. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she has a theologically accurate mind. Um, but anyway, so, so the very, many things wrong with so what many things wrong. All right, so I have to forgive God. First of all, you don't forgive God. You should be repenting for even thinking that you have to forgive God. If you have that issue, then you're the one that needs forgiveness, not God. That's for sure. And then, Danny, even even saying, well, I know God didn't really do anything wrong and God doesn't need my forgiveness, but because I felt it, I'm going to do it anyway. Well, if we use that kind of mentality living as Christians, what kind of deep ruts, sinful ruts are we going to fall into? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Not right, but I felt it. Now, you know what the remedy for this is? Um, the remedy for this is, is doing what the Bible says. Confess your sins to one another. If your brother has sinned against you, go and show him his fault between the two of you. If he repents, then you've gained your brother. James talks about confessing our sins to one another. We can go to our pastors. We can confess our sins to our pastors and let them know, get that off of our chest. We can do these things, and these are all helpful. But this kind of stuff is evil. It's wrong. It's totally unbiblical. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those. Yes. Um, so, yeah, not even saying, why don't you tap in, God, forgive me for my bad attitude towards you. Yeah. And tap that in yeah. three times. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Exactly. And, you know, Danny, this reminded both of us of when we did the Sozo video. And the woman that uh, was led through a Sozo session and this sozo -y, or Sozo, yeah, Sozoer, this Sozoer uh, convinced her that she needed to forgive God. In the Sozo, they led me through a prayer of forgiveness where I forgave God, which sounds very strange because God didn't do anything wrong, so why do I need to forgive him? But it was about me releasing the resentment and the bitterness I had. And honestly, before the Sozo, I didn't realize it was there. I mean, I, I mean, it was an accident. He had a car accident. <laughs> so, I mean, why would I blame God for that? But as I went through the sozo, I began to understand that, yeah, I really did blame God. And I did need to release this unforgiveness and this resentment I had. All right. So that's. That, that's how similar, the, and, and there are differences between Splunkna and Sozo, but they are part of the same. And, you know, um, I, I was looking for some kind of connection in the beginning here. And I do know that Sarah Thiessen was going to be at some point, I don't know if it's already happened or not, but in a conference, in an inner inner healing conference. And Donna De Silva, De Silva was one of the speakers. Right? Donna De Silva is the, one of the founders of Sozo. Is that the one that's going to happen in November? No, over yes. the ago. Okay. We have a, a slide we'll put up right now and show you in case you're interested in attending the 2020. Mm. No, that was 2022. 2022. It's already done. Okay. Inner healing symposium. And it had both Sarah and Donna De Silva. Yeah. So, uh, and that was the only real connection I could find between the two. I know Sarah Thiessen is, um, uh, not associated, as far as I know, not associated with Bethel uh, Reading. 
Right. Okay. So enough of forgiving God for one day. Um, in addition to the tapping on the hand, um, our life coach does a lot of collarbone tapping, and we're going to see some information on that. Collarbones are similar to positive affirmations or even identity statements. So using the collarbone is just one more technique to integrate body, mind, and spirit. I oftentimes will start in a Svankna session even to say, I'm safe to do this work. I'm safe to do this work. I'm safe to do this work. Tap it in. Uh, when I find myself intimidated about something, I will create a collarbone statement. It might be something like, I'm competent, I'm creative, I'm gifted and anointed in Christ to do this work. I am competent, gifted, anointed, even created in Christ to do this work. I'm competent, gifted, created, and anointed in Christ to do this work. Tap it in. Yeah. That was Stuart Smalley. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Um, I'm gifted, I'm anointed, and doggone it, people like me. I'm going to do a terrific show today, and I'm going to help people because I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. But listen, so, um, all right. First of all, if you have to tap your collarbone to convince yourself that you are anointed and gifted and you're able to do this work, you're probably not able to do that work. You know, it's, it's really just, it's so bad, Robin. It's just unbelievable. It really is. Now we're going to move on to the next thing that these Splunkna practitioners use to get the ball rolling, and that is muscle testing. Mm. And the whole idea behind muscle testing is your body will be able to tell you or others if it is lying to you, like not you intentionally telling a lie, but your body is holding on to something and actually can lead you to the truth. Mm. Do we have Doreen? We do have a little Doreen. bit about muscle yes, testing. Yes, we do. Have you, so what about muscle tapping? Uh, yes. Can, can you, can you talk a little bit about muscle tapping? Because that's, that's one of Sarah Thiessen's and, and the whole Splunk thing, that, that's their thing. This, this idea that, um, you know, doing this muscle tapping is going to somehow take care of all of these little uh, your traumas that are placed throughout your body somewhere. Can you just talk about that a little bit? Sure. Muscle, muscle tapping, also called kinesiology, is um, an ancient form of so-called healing. I've received a lot of it. Before I was saved, I wouldn't go near it now. Uh, and so in Splanka, the belief is that through muscle testing, which a lot of it is they'll have you hold the hand of the practitioner, and then they'll ask you baseline questions. Are you a man or a woman? Uh, were you born in California, Ohio? Where were you born? And then based on whether you can hold your hand up steady or not, or you are more weak and your hand goes down, you're either telling the truth or lying. Mm. And from muscle testing, supposedly the Splanka practitioner can pinpoint where in your body your stored trauma is. And boy, that's something that we used to believe in the new age that, you know, for instance, if you're a sexual abuse survivor, that you'd have to clear your hips of this trauma in there. And, and then we would prescribe yoga for that. And of course, yoga being a Hindu um, deity worship practice, not something Christians should be involved in. So this whole hokey belief that some part of your body can hold on to a stored memory, I know that belief. I know it from many different um, titles it has. It's repackaged and resold every year. And it's a money-making system. I So Splanka has admitted that they've taken all these different modalities like EMDR, which is eye movement um, therapy, which I also went through, uh, which was a lay person who found out that if your eyes move in a certain direction, you, you supposedly release your trauma and it makes your mind a blank slate. I went through that and... Uh, it, the, all these methods are the same. They're all EFT and, and all the yeah, EFT. Yeah, and, and EFT, EFT. I used to tour with the authors of EFT, the so called uh, energy freedom technique, the tapping, mm. and they would have you tap different parts of your body. And even as an unsafe person, Daniel, I was horrified 
that they were telling people to hit themselves. That just never made sense to yeah. me. <laughs> and now as a Christian, it makes even less sense that it, it's not in the Bible anywhere to hit yourself, to heal yourself. It's, we yeah. know that Jesus is the great physician and we, and we know it's sometimes God's will not to heal it's because a lot of this reminds me of the Word of Faith movement and Christian science that I grew yeah. up in that said, if you just get the right prayer, if you just get the, enough faith, God is guaranteed to bless you with healing, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And here's Planka saying, okay, we're going to do Chinese medicine, and then we're going to we're going to superimpose Christian prayers on top of that. It yeah. doesn't work like that. This is this reminds me of people who say they can have holy yoga or Christian yoga, yeah. which again is is idolatry of Hindu deities, and it can't be redeemed. And then they say, well, hang on, we say Christian prayers and we use Bible verses while we're doing yoga. But think about the application of that argument. Let's say you take a Ouija board that most people would agree is a pagan device. Yes. Most people would say Ouija boards are spiritually dangerous. Now, let's say you put Christian prayers on that Ouija board and you said, okay, look at it. it's It's got only Christian prayers and Bible verses on here. And and Jesus still, redeemed, you know, he's redeemed the world. So he's, you know, this is, this is, we're just taking this and claiming it for ourselves. Yeah. Oh, I hear that all the time. It's Christian freedom. You legalist, you Pharisee, how dare yeah. you say that I, I can't do what I want. And all of these new age practices that are being used by mm -hmm. Christians. Like I know when we did a video on Emma Stark, mm -hmm. um, they were talking about using Christian tarot cards at <laughs> one point. And when Doreen mentioned Ouija boards, I thought, I just read something about a Christian Ouija board, which we literally went over to Amazon and we found for the low, low price of what, $29.99? $29.95. The, Holy, the Spirit Holy Spirit Board by Holy Spirit Games, Christian Religious Talking Board for Seance with the Planchet, which is the... I think the little cross shaped. Yeah, it's got the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and there's videos uh, of people using this thing. It's really creepy. So, this is the description of the Holy Spirit Board. The Holy Spirit Board is the only spirit board designed to directly contact our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Unlike other spirit boards that are often used to contact ghosts and demons, this is a one way ticket straight to heaven. <laughs> Try it today and discover a new way to pray. Is that horrifying? That is horrifying. Um, that is very horrifying. Uh, let me let me show that picture just one more time so you can kind of get an idea we'll of, uh, of the of the people. Yes, I I've so, I Danny. put that up there. Yep, I'll put that up okay. there again. Yeah. So I mean, it's 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 absolutely uh, it's absolutely crazy that this stuff is uh, is in there. So we did want to read you this five star comment the Holy Spirit Board got. Uh, it states, I've been a believer my whole life and pray constantly. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I've learned to never expect answers from God, so I've approached the Holy Spirit board humbly and with humility. I've been so amazed and hashtag blessed by this incredible tool for communicating with Jesus, even though my prayers aren't always answered the way I'd hoped for or at all because his will is above my own and I don't I don't not understand his ways I'm now at least able to have some peace by getting an explanation as to why or at least hear from him that he isn't angry or unpleased at me I've also gotten so much peace being able to take my confessions and repentance to him and receive his blessings directly as if we were chatting on the phone like good friends I've never felt so close to Jesus. This board is a true answer to my pleas for a closer walk with my Lord. How um, many things are wrong with that statement, Danny? And it, it's really sad. It, it, it really is because God has given us his word and so many ways to know, uh, you know, his, his grace. We have his word, his sacraments. Why do we need to use a pagan and, and and folks, the Holy Spirit board is a pagan object. It is it is it is something that should never ever be played around with. And I know this isn't a video about the Holy Spirit board, but um, this just kind of shows you how people are bringing, 
you know, new age uh, and occult practices into the church. Let's take this ugly practice, mm -hmm. paint it up a little bit and call it Christian. Yeah, and absolutely. Sad. So if 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 Splunkna's OK, uh, then why can't the Holy Spirit board be OK? Exactly. exactly. It's just... OK, let's get back to a little more about muscle testing. We have a clip with Holly Wharton talking about muscle testing. So why would you want to use muscle testing? I assume if you're watching this video, you've heard of this, you know what it is. Basically, it's to get answers from yourself, from your higher self or from your subconscious mind. And the idea is that you already know the answers to the questions that you'll be asking, but sometimes it's difficult to tap into that information, so muscle testing can make that easier, especially when it comes to connecting with your subconscious mind or your higher self. So to connect with your higher self mm -hmm. is one reason we're going to use the muscle testing. Yeah. Now, to see this practice in action, we have a, a practitioner named Bradley Nelson. I don't think he's Splunkna per se. He is not. But he is a muscle tester and he goes into a great deal it's almost like he when he has a one of these conferences calls up a lot of people puts on his show and that's what he's doing here to show how muscle testing works do you think that judy's subconscious mind if it's really been tracking everything that's been going on in her life since day one do you think that it knows why she has pain yes. it yes. absolutely knows in detail now there may be more than one reason okay there may be several but it knows in absolute perfect detail exactly what she needs and exactly why she's got pain. So let's do this. Let's ask. You ready? Um, we'll simply ask the subconscious mind if there's a trapped emotion. So is there a trapped emotion that has anything to do with this pain level that you're having, the, the pain that you're in? What does your body say? That's a yes, remember? Say, today's Friday. Today's Friday. Her computer says yes. Is there a trapped emotion that is, uh, having to, that is helping to create your pain? And what does your body say? Yes. It says yes, right? So here's what we need. Um, we have a list in the book, okay? Um, if you go back a few pages, there's a list in there of, of emotions, okay? Now, here's the neat thing about this, okay? Her subconscious mind knows exactly what emotion this is that's, that's bothering her. Now, she may have more than one, but let's find out what it is, okay? Watch. And she, yes. Do they have to see this? Do they? No, the question is, do people have to see this chart? And the answer is no. no. Why? Because the subconscious mind is tuned into universal intelligence. So it already knows what's on the chart. By, by talking to us, we know what's on the You know, however it works, I don't know. I think it just knows already. It just knows. Which reminds me of a joke that I'll tell you later. Okay? All right, here we go. Are you ready? Okay, this trapped emotion, is it in the chart in column A? Is it in column A? And her body says yes. Is it in column B? And her body says no. So is it in one of the odd rows in column A? And her body says yes. Notice how many, we've already eliminated what, 45 emotions? Right? So, okay. So is it in one of the odd rows then? Is it in row one? No. So we're in column A. I'm sorry, I probably went through that too fast. Let's do that one more time. Sorry, I, I get on a roll and, you know. Notice that we've divided this chart into two columns and six rows, right? Mm -hmm. Why have we done that? To make it fast for you to find the emotion, see? You can't do it any faster, I don't think. There's 60 emotions on here. First of all, we're going to eliminate one of the rows, or I'm sorry, one of the columns. So we'll ask, is this emotion listed in column A on the chart? Her body says yes. Is, so we could also ask, is this emotion listed in column B on the chart? And what does her body say? It says, no, it's definitely in column A. So we just threw out. 30 emotions. So that was pretty convoluted, huh? It really was. And so what happens is like you hold your arm up and when you tell a lie, your body uses loses a little bit of its energy. So your arm goes down and through that process, they can pinpoint where different traumas happened in your life. That woman on that clip, actually, she... Uh, Splunkna muscle tested her way to something that said she had felt abandonment. And she said, I think it was when I was 10 when my we moved around a lot. We were in the military, so I never felt that connection with other people. He's like, well, let's see if you're right. And actually her body led him 
to find out that she had experienced trauma in the womb. In the third trimester of her being in the womb through her mother. So it. Well, when you're tuned into the universal spirit, you know, he's going to he's going to let you know these things through all of these practices. Anyway, Isn't that crazy. And, and, and it really is. And Robin, this reminds me so much of um, what it, the Israelites were doing in the Old Testament when they were bringing in pagan idols into the temple. The God said, do not do that. They're bringing these pagan idols into the temple uh, to worship along with, along with God. And so we're going to look at what, what does the Bible say about, um, oh, I don't know, um, mixing worship of God with pagan ideas and pagan idols? Um, right. Our first verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 21 through 22. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? And so I know that verse, uh, those verses are talking about the Lord's Supper, um, but they're still, they, they can still be applied to the situation. We do not, we do not mix pagan idolatry, pagan practices with uh, with Christianity. We just, we, it's just, you don't do that. Right. And I would think even if there was any question, the slightest question mm -hmm. as a, a Christian who wants to please the Lord, your response should be to back away from it. Yeah. If there's any question about whether it's appropriate or not. Absolutely. If you're, if you're even, if there's even any doubt at all, yeah. you know, yeah, absolutely. Okay, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. For what partnership has light with darkness. What partnership do we have as Christians with the New Age movement? We don't have any kind of partnership with the New Age movement. No. Psalm 1, 1 and 2, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So in the Old Testament, the Israelites, you know, the, the Israelites were, were, were doing exactly what God said not to do. They were bringing idols into the temple. The wicked kings were doing that. They were taking pagan idolatry and mixing it with the worship of God in the temple. And so we've got a couple of verses that show that. Second Kings 16, 10 through 14, when King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath, Eliezer, king of Assyria, he saw the altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz said to Uriah the priest, a model of the altar and its pattern exact in all its details. And Uriah the priest built the altar in accordance with all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Uriah the priest had made it before King Ahaz arrived from Damascus. And when the king came from Damascus, the king viewed the altar. Then the king drew near to the altar and went up on it and burned his burnt offering and his grain offering and poured his drink offering and threw the blood of his peace offerings on the altar. And the bronze altar that was before the Lord, he removed from the front of the house, from the place between his altar and the house of the Lord, and put it on the north side of his altar. So we have right there in that passage of scripture, the king actually sending um, blueprints, so to speak, to the priest to build this altar from a pagan um, idol or a pagan altar that was in Damascus. So it's just in, in that that's 
That's what's going on when you are mixing pagan practices and pagan ideas with the, you know, with Christianity, with, with the Christian faith. You can't do that. And, and then what happened? The true altar of the God of God got moved. Mm hmm. He moved the altar and they started um, mm. worshiping on the pagan altar from Damascus. Right. So this next one is uh, from Second Kings is talking about uh, Manasseh, the, uh, uh, the wicked king Manasseh. Second Kings 21, 7 and 8. And the carved image of Asherah that he had made, he set in the house of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. And I will not cause the feet of Israel to wander any more out of the land that I gave to their fathers. If only they will be careful to do according to all that I've commanded them and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. So as you can see from just those passages of scripture, and there are many other passages throughout the Old and New Testament that forbid us to do this kind of thing. We are forbidden to bring in pagan practices and pagan ideas into biblical Christianity. It is sin. God forbids it. And that's exactly what's going on with Splankna and Sozo. Right. And so they're actually the um, participants will be asking God to bless mm -hmm. a very ungodly practice because they may have cleaned it up a little. Yeah. And, and, and unfortunately, it's not cleaned. It is not redeemed. This stuff is evil, folks. It's something that should be marked and avoided. Thanks for watching. Bye.